The role of mycorrhizae in phosphorus cycling, an informative animation by John Baker and Jordan Fox. To understand mycorrhizae's impact on the phosphorus cycle, we must first understand the mycorrhizal fungi themselves, and to do that, we must understand first symbiotic relationships. A symbiotic relationship is a long-term association between two different organisms that are different species than one another. In many cases, the relationship is obligatory and they live together for each of their own benefits. Symbiotic relationships are seen in tons of organisms, including the relationship between clownfish and sea anemones for protection and food, and the relationship between cleaner wrasses and other fish for food and parasite removal. An example in plants is the relationship between mycorrhizae and the roots of vascular plants. Mycorrhizal fungi have an effect on all kinds of environmental processes, the most researched of which are its effects on soil organic matter decomposition, nitrogen cycling, and phosphorus cycling. However, we're going to discuss the implications of the mycorrhizae plant symbiosis in relation to phosphorus cycling. The extent of the symbiotic relationship of mycorrhizae and plants is determined by a few main factors. Soil nitrogen amounts, nutrient reserves in the plant, plant age, plant growth rate, and the type of plant and mycorrhizae involved. Unlike many other cycles in biogeochemistry, the phosphorus cycle does not have a gaseous phase. The largest reservoir of phosphorus on Earth is located in sedimentary rocks, which is where the cycle begins. When it rains, the rocks are weathered, which removes phosphate from the rocks and distributes it throughout soil and water. Plants will take up some of those phosphate ions from the soil. That phosphate gets transferred to animals when herbivores eat those plants and when carnivores eat herbivores. The phosphate that gets assimilated into plants and animals will eventually re-enter the cycle in the soil through defecation and decomposition after plant and animal death. Mycorrhizae assist plants by expanding and complementing their root functioning. Mycorrhizae live in two places during their symbiotic relationships with plants, in the inner root volume of the plant itself and in the soil around the plant's roots, which connects the plant's root system to a much larger soil volume. This increases soil contact and allows plants to reach and obtain more resources, like phosphorus, that they couldn't reach with just their roots alone. Mycorrhizae get mostly all of the nutrients needed for their survival from their host plant's products of photosynthesis. The, the mycorrhizae primarily help the plants improve their acquisition of nutrients, especially nutrients that aren't very mobile in soil, like phosphorus. Mycorrhizae also help plants develop a higher resistance to both abiotic and biotic stresses, like droughts and infection. By competing with pathogens in the soil for the plant's carbohydrates, the mycorrhizae can effectively defend the plant from infection. As you can see, the effect of the relationship between mycorrhizae and plant roots on phosphorus cycling is extensive. Humans can greatly affect the cycling of phosphorus in the environment, like by the deforestation of tropical rainforests and by the application of fertilizers for agricultural use. Fostering symbiotic relationships with mycorrhizal fungi and different crop plants could help increase food production. Doing this could also reduce the amount of water-soluble mineral phosphorus fertilizer we have to apply to crop fields, which would help minimize the leaching of phosphorus into the environment. Understanding these topics can help us foster the benefits of these relationships and also manipulate these relationships to prevent negative implications like the expansion of invasive plants. So, next time you see some plants outside, think about how cohesively their symbiotic relationships mesh in our environment and appreciate the biota around you. Created using Powtoon.